There are some disturbing findings from a new study on beluga whales. Researchers found microplastics inside the stomachs of all seven whales tested in the remote Arctic. The group OceanWise worked with hunters from communities in the Northwest Territories. They collected, collected samples from whales harvested between 2017 and 2018, and on average, they found at least 10 microplastics inside the intestinal tracts of the whales. Researchers say it's likely they ate fish that had already ingested the plastics. For more, I want to bring in Rhiannon Moore. She's the lead writer of the OceanWise study and an MSC researcher. Joining me from Vancouver, Rihanna, this is so disturbing, but perhaps not surprising. Tell us a bit more about this study. Yeah, so we worked with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada and the Anuvialuit community of Taktayaktak, which is in Northwest Territories. And we looked at microplastics in beluga whales. So as you said, we looked at seven, and we found microplastics in the intestines and the stomach of each whale. And that means not necessarily that they ate the plastics, although that could be a possibility, but they ingested fish, as we mentioned. So the food that they're eating is contaminated. Yeah, it's possible. So that's what we're investigating right now. Um, we're looking to see if microplastics are ending up in fish, and then that could be a very important exposure pathway to belugas. So is it not easy to tell if the microplastics themselves are being ingested by belugas and also being ingested by fish, which the belugas then eat? Yeah, it's real. It's very difficult to track that um, because there's so many different types of plastic, and there's no barcode on them where where you can track exactly where it came from. Right. Um, I found over eight different types of plastic, so it's really difficult to know the sources of those. But they are uh, very, very small pieces, so it's very likely that they come from faraway sources. And the fact that this was located in the far Arctic, in the northern Arctic. What does that tell you? What can we surmise from that? Well, that tells us that we definitely have a plastic pollution problem, but I think we already know that. Yes. Um, it tells us that we are contaminating many different ecosystems, even remote, pristine ecosystems, and also that plastic is, is ubiquitous. That's a term that we use a lot. So it gets into nearly everything. It's lightweight and it's durable. So that's why we love plastic. It makes our life very convenient. But these characteristics also make it very persistent in the environment. Are these belugas kind of like the canary in the coal mine, or are we already way beyond that, Rhiannon? They're actually, belugas are actually called canaries, but for a mm. different reason. It's <laughs> because they are very musical. Um, but it's possible that they are the canary in, in the Arctic. Microplastics have been found in other Arctic species, but this is the first report um, done in Canada on microplastics in, in marine mammals. Has the genie left the bottle? And even if it has, how can Canadians minimize their contribution to microplastic pollution in our waters? Yeah, so the first thing to do is just to look at the amount of single-use plastic that you use. So most plastics, if it's not recycled or incinerated, they do become microplastics, so they don't biodegrade. Um, so just reducing. So we often forget that the first R that we learn is reduce, but it's the most important. Um, so every Canadian has a part to play in, in trying to reduce their plastic footprint, and that includes supporting government that uh, supports these policies to reduce plastic and, and recycle plastic more and keep it out of our oceans. Rhiannon Moore is the lead writer at OceanWise. I do appreciate your time today, Rhiannon. Thank you. Thank you.